today's broadcast of Weight Loss Wednesday. If you're watching live right now, could somebody please type in that we have sound? Last week we went about six and a half minutes before I realized that I had no sound. So we'll just wait a moment till people start logging on. And as soon as we have somebody type in, yes, I can hear you, we'll get started. Nobody, where is everybody? I don't want to do my dance again. <laughs> I have no idea what to do until we're there. My husband Charles said he would log on at two o'clock and tell me. So it takes a few minutes. Can you hear? If you can hear me, just type in yes, I can hear you, so then we'll start. They can't hear or they're just not logging on. Colleen says she can hear you. Thank you so much, Colleen. So we'll get started. All right, here we go. Hey everybody, I'm Chef AJ and welcome to the second installment of Weight Loss Wednesday. I hope this will be a regular feature as long as you're interested. This is where I answer your questions about healthy, sustainable, and permanent weight loss. I'm the creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program and if you are familiar with my story, you know I've lost over 50 pounds and kept it off for over four years now. And I really think I can help you achieve the health and the body you deserve. Feel free to type in questions, but realize we may not get to them today, but we'll save them for a future broadcast because I have quite a few questions that have already been submitted by people that are currently enrolled in my Ultimate Weight Loss Program and on my mailing list. If you're not on my mailing list, please consider signing up for my newsletter at www.eatunprocessed.com. So I'll answer the easiest question first from Nancy, which is, do you have a recipe for compliant French fries? And by compliant, she means compliant with the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, which is the same diet as the one sought at True North Health for over 30 years. It's a whole food, gluten-free, plant-based diet free of sugar, oil, and salt. And absolutely I do. I refer you to my television show, Healthy Living with Chef AJ. I can't remember which episode it is, but 10 of the 13 are available right now on foodietv.com as well as online and I show you exactly how to do that. It's really, really easy. And if you go to my webinars, I show you as well. I like to use something called the Crisp Ease Tray because then I don't have to flip them, but it's super easy to make compliant french fries or sweet potato fries. Thank you, Nancy, for your question. I'll also do this other culinary question first because these are a little bit less involved. Caroline wants to know, how do you convert a regular recipe to replace the taste of umami and salt? So I'm gonna answer this as me, because it's the only person I can answer from it, but as a professionally trained chef, I can't, Caroline. So I've never had real great luck just taking an already existing recipe by another chef and then just converting it to an SOS free recipe. I think that is much harder than just making up a recipe yourself. And so people seem to like my recipes, at least the ones that uh, are popular and you know I'm here on forks over and I things like the red lentil chili and none of my recipes have any added sugar any added or any or any added salt but I layer the flavors using things like garlic and onion and using fresh herbs and using things like salt free seasonings that have a lot of flavor like uh, like chili powders and chipotle powder and smoked paprika so this is something I guess we partially learned in culinary school, but partly it was trial and error. And I use the Myriad salt-free seasonings, which I'm gonna to get to in a minute, but I don't know if you can replicate an existing recipe to taste like the existing recipe, but you can come up with a better recipe. I know that in Chef Bravo's book, Bravo, he talks about this quite a lot, and when he lectures, he talks about how you use different things, like maybe you're going to saute some onions, but maybe you're also gonna use some onion powder or fresh onion. And this is where it would be really helpful to go to True North and come to the holiday cooking extravaganza December 23rd to January 2nd this year because every day you have Chef Bravo or myself or Kathy Fisher or Katie Mae doing cooking demos where we show you how to maximize flavor with SOS free cooking. But a lot of times it's not just the salt that you're missing but it's texture that we're looking for. So you know, having, having things of a variety of textures in a dish, not having everything be smooth or having everything be crunchy. But it's a great question and one that, you know, I'm not sure I can answer to your satisfaction. If you go to straightupfood.com, Kathy Fisher's wonderful blog, and she has a cookbook of the same name coming out very soon, you know, she is really uh, great at making things taste amazing without salt. So what I would do is I would just use those recipes. You know, people write me every day and saying, here's my aunt's coffee cake, make it SOS free. I can't, I can't take a, you know, a standard American diet recipe with sugar and oil and flour and salt and make it a UWO recipe. I mean, I, it's not possible for me. If somebody's out there, great, you know, write me. But I think it's just easier to come up with your own recipes. And I understand that you wanna do this because 
regular people or sad eaters will like it, but number one, you know, they're probably not gonna like it because when their palate has been so adulterated by the standard American diet, our food's not gonna taste good to them. So give them things that they will like, like the recipes in my book on processed, where I use a small amount of products that have salt, like a little bit of low sodium miso and coconut aminos, that may be more pleasing to their palate until they can fully neuroadapt if, if they even wanna do that. But thank you for the question and back on salt. So last week, and you can find all the archives on this page that you're watching me right now under videos, we talked extensively about salt. So I don't wanna go back and repeat that, but I do wanna say that there were a couple more questions about it that I'm going to uh, cover. So Lisa wanted to know if there was a soy sauce replacement. Well, yes and no, there is, but they're still gonna have sodium. So for example, a teaspoon of salt has 2,300 milligrams of sodium. And if you eat the diet that I recommend and eat enough calories from fruits, vegetables, whole grains and legumes, and maybe a little bit of nuts and seeds, avocado, if you can afford those fat calories, you'll get at least 500 milligrams of sodium a day. So you're not gonna be sodium deficient unless you're calorie deficient like you won't be protein deficient unless you're calorie deficient. So there are some products that do contain sodium but less and a lot of people say well how about Bragg's and how about low sodium tamari? Sure, way less than salt but still too much in my opinion and I don't use them and I certainly can't use them when I'm teaching a true north. The product that I most recommend for the interim if people cannot go salt free right away is something called Coconut Secret Coconut Aminos. You can get it at just about every Whole Foods, Sprouts and Mothers I've ever visited as well as online and it does contain salt as the second ingredient. The ingredients are coconut sap and salt but one teaspoon contains only 90 milligrams of sodium. So you could have for 90 milligrams of sodium a teaspoon versus 2300 in salt, you end up having way less sodium because you won't need that much of it. So this would be the alternative I recommend for people that can have a little bit of sodium in their diet as well as low sodium miso. I don't have any to show you right now, but the two brands that are salt free, or excuse me, low sodium are called Cold Mountain or South River and you can get those at most Whole Foods as well as online. But what I want to encourage you to do is try to make salt-free delicious. And so what I have here is a bunch of seasonings that I use. Now my favorite is Benson's Table Tasty. And you can get 10% off their website, which is Benson's, with an S, GourmetSeasoning.com. And this is my favorite, the Table Tasty, because I'm allergic to black pepper, and this is black pepper free and garlic free, but it tastes the most like salt. She's using things like fresh herbs, lemon peel. This stuff is absolutely delicious, and this is my favorite one. And she has an entire line of salt free seasonings. Many of them do contain black pepper, so I have them for other people, but I don't use them. This is the uh, Calypso and the Heritage, and they're all really delicious. We've got uh, the Ponderoso and the Gusto, two other flavors. A lot of them taste, you know, like, like if you barbecue, they're made for people that like grill meats. What other flavors of Benson's do I have? This might be the only other one. This is Masterpiece. So there's a bunch of different delicious salt-free seasonings, but there's some that you can get without having to go online. For example- And they're all vegan. Absolutely. Now, if you're a Costco member, and I encourage you to be one because they have the most amazing array of fresh and frozen organic fruits and vegetables. This one people love. I've heard Mary McDougall talk about it on the Dr. McDougall weekly webinar. This is a Costco organic no salt seasoning. I can't enjoy it because of the black pepper, but people seem to really love this one, especially on those baked oven fries. This one I also got at Costco. It's, it's a herb and garlic blend, absolutely delicious. You know, you can just go to the regular grocery store too and get Mrs. Dash. Mrs. Dash comes in a bunch of different flavors. Unfortunately for me, all of them have black pepper. Just found another Benson's called Zesty that's really, really good on vegetables. What else have we got here? Oh, Bravado is one of the, the really delicious ones of Benson's. Uh, if you have a savory spice near you, I encourage you to go there or buy online. This is a delicious sprinkle of just onion and garlic. Love it. Got another Benson's here called Supreme. They're all different, they're all delicious. Thanks Kenny for the great shots. Even your Whole Foods will have salt-free seasonings. Here we have just an herb mix I picked up there. You know, and of course there's always black pepper, which is salt-free. Again, Savory Spice has tomato powder, which is fantastic, and it's, it doesn't taste salty, but it's such an intense flavor. It really helps your dishes mimic that. And you can make your own sun-dried tomato powder just by taking sun-dried tomatoes in a blender. 
I got this when I was speaking in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, and I found it in my store here. This is a wonderful salt-free seasoning that's been around forever. We also have people send me salt-free seasonings all the time. This one especially I love because it's got my name on it. I didn't create this, but it's called AJ's. And Sharon McRae sent me this one that has some flaxseed in it for your omega, so this is really good too. What I like to do, oh, you know, I was at Farmer's Market the other day for Bailey's birthday, and they had a, a Dragonura shop, and they do have a salt-free spice as well, blend. And you know what I love is uh, Penzi's has wonderful salt-free spices. And what I have in this bottle right here is just dehydrated celery. It's not celery salt. It's actual celery that I got dehydrated already at Penzi's, and I ground up in my Vitamix. And celery tastes incredibly salty. If you have a dehydrator, you can make it yourself. So there's lots and lots of options for salt-free seasoning. So I showed you some. Fresh herbs are also great. And if you really want to bump up that salty taste or think that you have a salty taste, you have your taste buds on your tongue for sour right next to the ones for salt, use lemon juice, lime juice, vinegars. These, especially on your greens, these really make you think you've had something salty. So I know that salt is, that seems to be the hardest thing for people to do without of sugar, oil, and salt. I have no, you know, if you want to eat salt, eat salt, but I know for people in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program that are struggling, it's an appetite stimulant, it causes us to eat more food, and it, you know, we really can't enjoy our food the way it is when we eat a lot of it, but you know, I understand how difficult it is, and you know, one thing at a time. So we had a great question about vinegar from, let me see who wrote this, ah, this is from Gwyn. Should we worry about the aged balsamic vinegars? Now, you weren't real specific as to what you wanted to worry about, so it's either one of two things, so I'll address them both, Gwyn. Now, all balsamic vinegars, to my knowledge, contain lead, at least in the state of California, because there's supposed to be warnings on all of them. And so at True North, where I have the privilege of being a guest chef, Dr. Goldhammer only allows one brand, and this is the O brand, which I've seen in regular grocery stores like Kroger's as well as Whole Foods, because this is the only one that's guaranteed lead-free. And the lead happens something in the aging or in the caskets. It's not that there's naturally lead in balsamic vinegar. And uh, so, th so if, you, if that's what you're worried about, if you're worried about the lead, then either use a different vinegar. There's apple cider vinegar, there's red wine vinegar, there's, there's rice vinegar, you can get these all unsweetened. So if you're worried about the lead, um, just make sure you get this brand. And it tastes good, it's just that it's not sweet and thick and reduced like the ones that I prefer, but it's, it's perfectly fine. Actually, my husband prefers this one to the sweet, thick ones. But if you like things thick and sweet and delicious like I do, you might want to get the brands that I use, which are Napa Valley Natural, which is 4% acidity instead of six, so it's much thicker than sweeter. You could actually take that old balsamic vinegar that I just showed you, cook it down yourself, boil it down, reduce it, and get it to be this consistency. And I love the brand Be Mind Paws. Now, Be Mind Paws is B-E-M-A-A-N-D-P-A-S.com. She'll be at the Engine 2 conference this weekend that I'm speaking at in Dallas. There's still time to get a ticket. You can use Chef AJ50 for $50 off. These are a little bit more expensive. They're delicious, you don't need a lot. Uh, I prefer the savory flavors to the sweet ones. But if you said, is, uh, do we need to worry about them? Because I know there was something going around the internet saying these were balsamic crack and not to, to have these. This is how I feel about it. You know, I never have more than about two tablespoons a day and each tablespoon is 28 calories. So I'll have 56 maybe calories a day from this because I don't drink this from the bottle. A bottle lasts me a really, really long time. Plus most of the time, I'm using the ones that are less sweet anyway. So there are people that are sensitive to certain foods, to the sugars, even the natural sugars in certain foods. I've met people that are food addicts that can't eat bananas or grapes or mangoes because it triggers them to just overeat exponentially. So if this or any product is a, pro is a problem for you, just don't eat it. There's no super or special food that you absolutely have to eat in your lifetime and certainly not every day. That said, it's really sad if people are avoiding the one thing that's gonna help them on the Ultimate Weight Loss Program or losing weight in general, which is eating more vegetables vegetables because we follow the principles of calorie density. Vegetables are the food that most people seem to like the least. The food's lowest in calorie density can be as low as 67 calories a pound, up to about 125 for most non-starchy vegetables. And using a couple tablespoons of these, either to roast them or in your salads, really helps people eat more salads and vegetables. At least this is what I found with the several thousand people I've worked with. 
So like I say, when I use this as dressing, I'm diluting it anyway. I'm diluting it as a minimum 50-50 with some lemon juice or lime juice. And usually I'm adding something like a little bit of water anyway or some mustard. I showed you how to do this in the last Chef of the Dietitian. So if, if what you were worried about was that it, it was balsamic crack, if it's crack to you, don't eat it, don't drink it. But many of us can use this in very moderate amounts. And like I say, I never do more than two tablespoons a day. And it really helps me get more salad and more vegetables in. But again, you don't have to have it. And uh, that's what I got to say about that. So thanks, Gwen, for your question. Okay, anybody online asking anything, Kenny, that they want me to cover? Because Someone had a question about what could they can supplement um, lentils for, because their son's allergic to lentils, what they can put in place of that. Well, can they, can the, can, can the son have any legumes? Is he is he completely legume uh, is sensitive and intolerant or allergic, or is it just lentil? Because of course I would say beans next. But you know what I've done is I I'm legume intolerant, and so what I've done for my recipes that contain things like lentils and beans is I've done things like the rice cauliflower because those have really similar textures. Or I'll take mushrooms and I'll use the S blade of the food processor, and so I will use those to get the similar texture that I was getting with the with the lentils before. Jenny Lee asked if. What she can carry in the car with her is a snack, something she could leave in the car in her purse um, to eat when she gets a little time for snack time. Sweet potato. We always recommend uh, vegetables and potatoes. Don't leave home without it. If I have time, I'll run over there and show you my cooler purse. Actually, go to my free webinar, uh, what, how to eat healthfully when you're not at home, and I show you how I travel, but always have a baked potato or baked sweet potato ready. That's probably the most important thing you can have because when, when your glucose drops and you're hungry, you'll make a bad choice. But if you have a delicious roasted sweet potato, which I always have in my refrigerator or in my cooler purse when I travel, that will save you. That's a great question. Thank you. So Marie says, I'm never hungry in the morning. Should I force food down anyway? I love this question, Marie, because I actually covered this in one of my teleclasses when I interviewed an expert in this field, Dr. Michelle May. And she said that preventative eating never works. So in other words, if you just filled up your gas, your car with gas and you put the tank to the maximum, you can't go drive a block and go to the next station and fill it up again. It doesn't work that way. So preventative eating is overeating in my opinion. And it, it, I, would, I don't wanna say never, but it rarely works. You see, no one could have ever gotten overweight unless they ate outside of the demands of true hunger. And so what we teach in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, which is not a weighing and measuring program, we don't weigh ourselves or our food, we learn to get in tune with eating when hungry and stopping when full because that's what caused this problem in the first place, is if you eat when you're not hungry, even if it's something like celery, you're still teaching yourself to eat when you're not hungry. And I know there's probably extenuating circumstances. For example, we have a girl in UWL, not a girl, a woman, who's on active duty in the military in Afghanistan. And I know that if she probably doesn't eat when they, it's not like it's a 24-hour restaurant in the military. And so there's certain cases that can be made where if you don't eat when food's available, you maybe aren't gonna eat. But most of us aren't on active duty in the military. And by the way, if she can do UWL in the military, you guys can do it at home. I would encourage you to learn to get in touch with your true hunger signals. And one of the reasons we eat vegetables for breakfast in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, there's many reasons, I can't cover them all here, but one of them is, is it's the litmus test for whether you're really hungry. Because when you wake up, if somebody offers you, you know, a cheese bagel with cream cheese and everything on it, or an egg McMuffin, or even oatmeal fruit, or a Cinnabon, you're gonna eat it probably even if you're not hungry, because hyper palatable foods always taste good. But whole natural food, especially vegetables, really only tastes good when you're hungry. So I always tell people, if you're not hungry enough to eat vegetables, you're probably not hungry. Now, I wake up in the morning between six and seven, and I almost never get hungry before 10, 30, or 11. But I make my breakfast, I make my vegetables, my potatoes are already cooked, and I always have rice on hand, so that when I am hungry, the healthiest choice is available. So. The other thing is, is like it, it, we encourage people to exercise in UWL to the degree that they're able. You know, it doesn't mean you have to go to the gym or run marathons, but there's always something everyone can do. And if you look at the video page with John Peter, we worked out with Shada, who was wearing a boot. There's always something that somebody can do, and many people like to exercise in the morning, which I think is the best time because it sets the tone for the day. It increases your self-esteem. And I don't know about you, but I personally can't work out if I've got anything, even a banana, in my stomach, which means that. By the time my spin class is over and I'm home, it's 10:30. It's you know I, I 
I wouldn't have eaten breakfast. That said, if you wake up like my husband and, and my dog Bailey, and if you're hungry, definitely eat. But don't feel you should eat because of some constraints or constructs that it, it's breakfast time. And, and again, I don't think you should eat because somebody else is hungry, just like I don't think you should pee because somebody else has to go to the bathroom. That's why socially probably this is the hardest thing when you eat healthfully because you're not always going to be hungry the same time as everybody else. You know, think about it. Those of you that have kids, do you force your kid to eat when it's convenient for you? I mean, I've seen people feed their infants and toddlers and they push the food away and spit it out. Nobody that I know forces a kid to eat when they're not hungry. Kids kind of graze all day. They're in touch with their true hunger signals. That's what I think we need to get back to. And that's why these programs that have you eat measured amounts certain times a day, if they work for you, great. I always say, do whatever is the least restrictive program that you can get the, the results you want. They didn't work for me and they didn't work for a lot of people. So problem with eating when you're not hungry is it keep, keeps teaching you to eat when you're not hungry. And the other thing I, I find so peculiar about these programs that make you eat designated meals at designated times, well, first of all, I travel full time for a living. I can't always be at those times, you know, with my food scale when I'm supposed to eat, but even more so, I don't get this. Do you guys get the same amount of hungry exactly every day? I sustained a back injury on September 10th and I'm off all exercise right now, except for light walking. I'm not hungry at all, but on days that I spin and walk daily for 90 minutes and do a 90 minute yoga class, I'm starving. So there is no correct amount of food to eat. Watch the video. I did the wonderful interview with Dr. Doug Lyle called Chef AJ Interviews Dr. Lyle, where he talks about there is no correct amount of food to eat because he's how much to eat for the next hour, the next two hours. Watch that video and learn. So get in touch with your signals, unless there's some extenuating circumstances where, you know, if, like, you know, I don't know, I, I actually, did know somebody in prison where, you know, if they didn't eat it the time, they didn't eat. But if you're not in prison, not in the military, learn to get in touch with your true hunger signals. That's what I think is best. Any more questions before I go on to the next one? Someone asked if you can eat cold potatoes. Yeah, absolutely. They're delicious with mustard. Oh my gosh, the Yukon Gold's cold with mustard. It's basically potato salad. People eat potato salad, it's cold. Sweet potatoes are great cold. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Oh, Chris wanted to know, no, excuse me, not Chris, uh, Trina wanted to know what about coconut milk? What about coconut milk? So I'm assuming you're asking, is it okay, is it compliant? Well, it depends what your goals are. We don't encourage it on the Ultimate Weight Loss Program because it's, it's a very, very high fat food. And the more you eat the high fat foods, the more you want them, the more you crave them, and it, they can slow or completely stall weight loss. So what some people do, like Mary McDougall, the brilliant recipe creator, is what she does is she takes a lower fat milk, like an almond milk or maybe a rice milk, and she adds a quarter teaspoon of a coconut extract to it, and that gives it the flavor. But really, when people want these high fat foods, it's not really for the flavor, it's for the hit of dopamine they get in their brain, because the more calorically concentrated the calories, the more dopamine is released. And so, you know, you can do light coconut milk, but all light coconut milk is coconut milk that water's been added, it's cheaper to make your own. So I don't recommend it if you're trying to lose weight or if you're somebody that struggles with food addiction and those high fat foods are a trigger for you so we, we don't use coconut milk you can do the trick with the extract but then again you get into the fact that there's really no extracts without alcohol or sugar or both and those two can be a trigger so you know try to enjoy the recipes that don't have the ingredients that could trigger you that could um, stall your weight loss that's my advice to you okay someone else asked um, you know they were noticing your arms and that you lost 50 pounds <laughs> and they were wondering how do you what do you do what exercise do you do to tone yeah, up your arms yeah. so they don't have your arms hanging so this is what I do I do this a lot. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but that was the exercise given to me by the physical therapist when I was in that horrible car accident. I do that, and I have little hand weights around the house. I have uh, four pounds in the bathroom, five pounds on the dining room table, and three pounds behind the screen. And whenever I think of it, I just do this. I show you that in the exercise video. I do this. And, and that's about all I do, but thank you. But you can see that there, you know, there still is some skin. I need to really fill this in with a tricep. I, I don't want to have skin surgery. I've got lots of skin on my tummy that goes, but you know, it is what it is because I'd rather be thin and have some extra skin than have that skin filled out again. But thank you very much. So um, Chris wanted to know, how in the world do you give up caffeine? The way you give up any other addiction, you just commit to doing it and you're doing it. It's not easy. If it were easy, everyone would be doing it. Now, I had to go through the withdrawal twice of giving up caffeine, and 
I started drinking coffee, don't ask me why, when I was four years old, my mother gave me coffee with sugar and cream. So I had the addictive sugar, the addictive caffeine, and the addictive dairy, like a speedball of three drugs from the age of four. And I, uh, and I ended up having a, uh, what's it called, a duodenal ulcer as an adult. Not from that, actually, it was from my tr international travel. I contacted uh, uh, the organism H. pylori, but the point was is the caffeine was not friendly to the gut, and it's not. As a matter of fact, I just came from the Plantrician Conference, and Robin, excuse me if I'm pronouncing her last name incorrectly, the Dr. Chutkin, she wrote Gut Bliss, she talked about all these things being unfavorable for the gut, things like stevia and the erythritol, all the sugar alcohols. Well, caffeine is just, it's it's like battery acid to your stomach, and it doesn't matter if it comes from tea or coffee or, or soda. It's not a natural substance, guys. It's a drug. It's not a food, and if, it, if you you don't believe me then don't don't consume it for 24 hours that's how you know it's a drug and that's how you know it's addictive it's a central nervous system stimulant and does it affect weight loss uh, you know maybe uh, you know here's the thing so I interviewed a sleep specialist dr. Roy Artal you can find that on my teleclass page and while it's not so much that drinking coffee or tea makes you gain weight or lose weight but what happens is is caffeine has a 17 hour half-life and so is little one cup of coffee can still affect your deep sleep later at night and what happens is when you don't get adequate sleep that definitely can affect your ability to lose weight so if it does affect weight it's indirectly but it can raise exogenous cholesterol and in the ultimate weight loss program we want people to have the freedom of being free from all their addictions so we don't recommend caffeine but it's not the first thing that I do with somebody that I'm working with dairy would be the first thing I would work on way before caffeine so the question though was how do you give it up so I gave it up at the age the first time at the age of 27 I was addicted to Diet Coke and I was drinking liters and liters a day and I remember watching a television show with with the local uh, psychiatrist dr. David Viscott who was saying he was pretty convinced that the sweeteners in Diet Coke caused brain damage and now they're showing that it, it probably does and and he thought it caused Alzheimer's and memory loss and so I had a I have a best friend who worked on the Batman movie the first one and she had these shoes like these one-of-a-kind shoes and I love wearing non-leather high tops and she said that if I got off Diet Coke she would give me these shoes I should have thought to grab them before we did this and so I went to Maui for eight days and I sat on a beach and I went through withdrawal you know you're gonna have a horrible headache and how many days it could be one day it could be four days what would be easier is to go to a place like True North Health in Santa Rosa California where you're in an environment of complete rest and you can fast and you just have to bite the bullet and get rid of those headaches uh, in a few days now or I had to go off caffeine again and got addicted to Coke Slurpees and, and regular Dr. Pepper and had to do it again. This time I went to the Optimum Health Institute and I was miserable for a few days. I mean, that's the nature of addiction. It's a bitch, you know, but you could go down slower. I'm a pull the bandaid off fast kind of gal, but you could do it slower. So let's take coffee. For example, you're drinking a um, cup of coffee or two cups of coffee a day. You replace about 25% of it with the same beverage in the non-caffeinated form. So if you're drinking one cup of coffee a day, that's let's say eight ounces, six ounces is your regular coffee and two ounces is your decaf. And you titrate the dose down. So you might stay at that for a week or even a month as slow as you want. And then after a certain amount of time where you're okay with that, then you go down another two ounces, another 25%, four ounces of, of caffeinated beverage, four ounces of uncaffeinated and then it's then it's two and six until you're off so that's another way to do it it is hard that's why people don't do it so thanks let's see so there's four questions but they're all sort of the same question in my viewpoint so I will kind of talk about them together but I'll read them first so Wendy wanted me to discuss plateaus Lisa wanted to know why she wasn't losing weight fast enough Jill wanted to know how to get the last 10 pounds off and Paulette has a friend who wants to lose 10 pounds in by October 10th for a wedding I look these all sort of the same question because the it, because I get it's like I'm not losing weight or I'm not losing weight fast enough so if you follow the principles in the ultimate weight loss program which again is the exact same diet as the McDougal maximum weight loss program it's McDougal program without the salt and the flour and the sugar and the high fat foods or it's the health promoting diet of true north if you're a woman you can expect to lose about one to two pounds a week and slow weight loss in my opinion is the best and it's the most sustainable people see me now as a thin person they forget that I used to weigh almost 200 pounds it took me 27 months to lose 47 pounds that wasn't a quick fix that was way less than a pound a week at the beginning I lost a little bit more but realize the heavier you are the more weight you're gonna lose even without perfect compliance so that's the thing people want and, and I think that when some, it's not that I think it's stupid to want to lose weight for your high school reunion or, or a wedding but you don't wait till three weeks before the event to do it 
you go you, you wait three years before the event I've got my high school my 40th high school reunion coming up in a few months and I'm very excited about it because I was the ugly duckling in high school I was the fat kid and I'm not anymore so I'm really excited about going actually but so the thing is, is I work with people that need to get off weight quickly like actresses for parts or people that have their daughter's wedding but I'm sorry to say that these are the people that always gain it back and they gain it back starting at that night because they're eating all the foods that they deprive themselves so I don't think that's a really a great way to go and yo-yoing is not good for your health and I think it actually makes weight loss harder when you keep losing and gaining so I think you have to look at this as a lifestyle change and not a diet even though UWL stands for ultimate weight loss program a lot of us think of it as the ultimate warranty for life because if you eat the way we suggest you will be protected against the common diseases of lifestyle like type 2 diabetes and heart disease and autoimmune disease and even certain cancers that plays plague most Americans over three-fourths of whom are even overweight or obese so your body will decide when it's going to release the weight no this program has never not worked for people to do it but when you say the last 10 pounds I'm like well the last 10 pounds of what is it muscle is it bone is it skin see we don't recommend weighing in the ultimate weight loss program either your food or yourself I never knew what I weighed until I mean except for when I went to the doctor's office I had no idea that my body would eventually get to this weight I wasn't going for any number because I didn't know what that number should be so if somebody is really insistent on weighing themselves my recommendation is to ditch the scale because they're not accurate even the ones that say the percent body fat and to go find and you can probably find this at maybe at your local hospital or contact Dr. Carrie Saunders she will know it's the BIA the bio impedance analysis because at least then you know you're weighing then when you it, it's you lay down and they put these electrodes on you and they tell you how much of you is bone and how much is water and how much is stool because the scale gives you no useful information and dr. Lyle talks about that in the video that I re recommended as well if you absolutely insist on weighing yourself then I would say once a month at the most but how do you know you need to lose 10 pounds you know Shada who many of you know because we she does a lot of these Facebook lives with me has lost over a hundred pounds on the ultimate weight loss program she's shorter than me she weighs more than me yet we wear the exact same size we borrow each other's clothes she has a completely different body type than me I'm I'm kind of like a boy now I got no more boobs I'm straight up and down you know I'm this is this is me I got no more butt shade is gorgeous I saw her in a bikini at Rancho La Puerta she's got curves she's got boobs I mean she's gorgeous we don't look the same we have completely different body types I believe dr. Lyle said she was a mesomorph and I'm the other one either the ectomorph or the endomorph but the point is is your genetics is going to determine with compliance how lean you're going to be and so instead of worrying about losing weight I would say why not concentrate on gaining weight and by gaining weight I mean gaining muscle weight do what John Pierre says start working out because first of all muscle weighs more than fat so the number means nothing but second of all you burn more calories at rest when you have more muscle so to say that I need to lose 10 pounds it's like how do you know and for who because the person that wrote that I've seen her picture we have we have one of the same shirts she looks amazing to me so I, I think the number just messes with your head uh, we have images if we're women from magazines and uh, you know television I work with some of these people and let me tell you something they're thinner than me I'm five six and I weigh between 114 and 119 that's where my weight's been the last four years and people tell me I'm too thin I'm not I'm normal my BMI is 18.5 but I get actresses in here that are already thinner than me that have to lose weight because the camera angle and if they don't lose five pounds they can't get into the wardrobe and I can get them there but the point is is we're obsessed with thinness let's be obsessed with health let's eat the diet style that is gonna make us healthy that's gonna protect our arteries and at the same time will cause us to release the weight so you know if you're at a plateau you're at a plateau shade was at a plateau for seven months but just because the scale isn't budging doesn't mean you're not getting healthier on the inside and it doesn't mean your clothes size isn't changing so many people in ultimate weight loss report that even though the scales not moving that they're in smaller sizes they feel better because if you're exercising hopefully you should be gaining weight so let's stop focusing on the weight guys let's start focusing on health and eating the right foods those are all the questions I have for today unless you guys have any more.
Three quick questions. Someone was asking about potatoes. Mm -hmm. Do you eat raw potatoes? No, no. She. I think the question was, can you eat them cold? I personally have never eaten. I think once I had a recipe with raw sweet potatoes. Uh, it was a raw food recipe. It was all right. But no, I, I, I tend to like them roasted the best. And, and uh, Someone else asked about soya milk and tea. Well, you know, here's the thing. Uh, I'm allergic to soy, but soy milk, if you uh, buy it commercially, is probably the cleanest milk because it has just two ingredients usually, soybeans and water. It also tends to be higher in fat. So even though legumes are very healthy, soybeans, edamame, are over 50% fat, so they're higher fat. So again, I, I were, not that I worry, but I watch the amount of fat that I'm eating because I'm on a low fat diet and it's just too high in fat for me. So, but I'm imagining if you're putting it in tea, you're putting in a splash, so I, I don't think it's a problem. I think when you don't drink milk, it's so much better, any, any of the alternate milks are better than drinking milk, even if, God forbid, they have some oil and, and sugar in them. Okay, is it okay to eat steel cut oats after eating yes, our breakfast veggies course. with a handful of blueberries bananas and eat a sweet potato absolutely so whatever starch you eat eat the starch you love so my favorite starch as this is the winter squashes like the kabocha squash and and the potatoes that's just my favorite they also happen to be the lowest in calorie density at about 400 calories a pound grains about 500 calories a pound legumes about 600 these are my new differences but eat what you love and you know I still cut oats I much prefer people to eat those over the rolled oats but what I even prefer more is the oat growth the original incarnation the least processed brand and you can make them in about five minutes in your instant pot electric pressure cooker but sure steel cut oats are great if you have a gluten problem you can get them gluten free and again you know uh, put some fruit in there and by the way you think about starting your day in a savory way especially if you're a sugar addict or a food addict you know what happens is the sooner we activate that sweet taste early in the day whether it's with you know actual sugar or even sometimes fruit and oats or just eating a fruit meal I find the more you crave sweets throughout the day so oats are great but how about savory oats you can make uh, Ann Esselstyn has a recipe for cheesy oats and you can put shiitake mushrooms and kale so eat oats they're great they help lower cholesterol they're satiating but think about having them in a savory way as opposed to always having them with fruit in a sweet way why is it I feel hungry yet can't finish my veggie meals but can still eat popcorn after <laughs> well, from Katie yeah well Katie that's because uh, you're probably eating outside of hunger so in other words when hunger is the when 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 hunger is the problem, food is the solution, and any food will satisfy biological hunger, but only certain foods will satisfy emotional hunger or cravings. And so, people that want popcorn are are craving these. High, well, first of all, popcorn is eighteen hundred calories a pound, it has the same caloric density as sugar, so it's horrible for weight loss. It's also a hand to mouth food, which means it can trigger a binge and overeating. I don't recommend ever eating with your hands if you're going to eat air pop popcorn use chopsticks to slow you down. And the reason is, is it's the same thing. You know, I was uh, I was teaching at True North one holiday extravaganza and Lori Wood was doing this cooking class where she made this delicious meal of, uh, of, the, of the stuffed potato, where she took potatoes or sweet potatoes and stuffed it with corn and beans and salsa and guacamole made of peas and it was delicious and everybody loved it and said one of the best things they ever had. You could eat the whole thing, maybe it was maybe 400 calories and we were full. And she said, would anybody like another or a piece of another? And we're like, oh, Oh no, we're too full. We were because this was really filling, satiating, delicious food. So she walked into the kitchen, she brought out this compliant carrot cake. She goes, Who would like a piece? And all 40 hands went up. It's the same thing. It's almost like we're, you know, how cows have four stomachs. It's almost like there's a separate stomach for dessert or junk food. And so the reason you can eat things like popcorn, well, it's possibly if you're only eating vegetables and then going to popcorn, if you're not eating any starch in between, you're probably hungry and you need some calories from starch. But it's all you can always eat foods to the right of the red line. You can always eat processed foods, high caloric foods, because these are the foods that medicate us in the brain. They release more dopamine. So that's pretty normal what you're saying. But that's not true hunger. That's emotional hunger. That's cravings. That's emotional. So you're eating for reasons out of anger or loneliness or boredom or anxiety or frustration or, or stress. And so when you have those emotions, you can always eat those foods. Which, which brings me to a point. This wasn't a question, but I want to address this. So there was a member, I'm not going to mention her name, but a member of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program that made a very poignant post last night because her dog had passed away unexpectedly and, and uh, you know that I you can, we have Kenny show that we're filming live in front of a studio audience right here we, we have bored poor Bailey to tears <laughs> we're getting ready to go to st. Joseph's Hospital where we volunteer now 
and um, and and you know, of course, my heart broke because to me, you know, not having ha been able to have children, you know, dogs are a very important part of my family. And then to add insult to injury, her granddaughter is about to have some very uh, complicated and dangerous surgery. And so she was saying that you know she's compliant for breakfast, maybe for lunch, but she's not for dinner. And she said, "I failed at UWL." Well, I want to tell you guys, you can't fail at UWL. You can't fail at any diet. You can't fail at anything unless you stop trying. That's really the only way you fail is to not try. And sometimes you got to be knocked up. You got got to be knocked down 999 times, but on the thousandth time of getting up is the time you're going to get it. So, you know, I remember hearing from Dr. Lyle uh, that because a lot of times when I started this program about eight years ago, people were not compliant. They were not listening to me and I was really frustrated and I wanted to kick them out. And I'm like, well, why are they paying me all this money and they're not doing what I say? You know, and uh, and so he said, look, an alcoholic that attends AA meetings, even when they're drinking, has a better chance of becoming sober. So what I say is, even if you can't do UWL or any program perfectly, do it to the best of your ability. You know, that's going to vary how your life's going. We get it. Life is stressful. But what I encourage you to do is find ways to mitigate your stress without food. The problem is, is that we are using food as a drug in the society and just the way some people use alcohol or recreational drugs or even prescription drugs most of us are or have been using food and if you don't find way to manage your stress Dr. Gould says, emotional eating expert, author of Shrink Yourself, you'll never be able to manage your weight. And so what I ask these people that have stress, and by the way, nobody has an easy life guy. He said, it may look like they do, but when you really get to know people, everybody's got something or will have something or has had something major, traumatic, uh, you know, in their life, grief, things like that. You have to have behaviors that you perform on a daily basis that are going to withstand you from the stress. So for example, meditation and exercise are two of the best things you can do. And if you're not doing those on a regular basis, these are brain stabilization activities, brain recovery activities, doing things like crafts, volunteer work, but you have to do them every day. You know, I was thinking, January 22nd of this year, I was in a horrific, fiery car crash. I was sitting, not sitting still, I was parked, not parked, but in my car, my foot was on the brake. I was at a red light and I was stopped and I was hit by two cars. It was a guy texting like 50 miles an hour through the intersection. And it was one of those things that like, you couldn't believe that all three of us walked away. Uh, you know, I, I mean, literally the cars were on fire. There, there were three cars, there was nothing left. And it was really, really scary. And, you know, that was an example of an acute stress that was going to go away. You know, there was, you know, had to get out of the hospital, do months of physical therapy, had to get a new car. But I had car insurance. And even though that's a really expensive bill that I have to pay every month, and I'm like, I wish I didn't have to pay that, I'm so grateful that I do that. Because when this happened, everything was taken care of in a reasonable amount of time. A brand new car was delivered. Well, when you have brain stabilization or recovery activities, like getting in some kind of movement first thing in the morning and meditation, that's like paying your car insurance. And we hope that you know, you hope you're never in a car accident, but aren't you glad that when you are, that you have this insurance? And of course, we hope that you never have grief or sorrow or stress, but it's unlikely that you won't. And that is why you have to fill the tank before it gets empty. You have to take care of yourself first, just like on the airplane. When the oxygen mask comes down, you breathe and then you help your kid. And most people in UWL are people pleasers. They're women that bend over backwards for everyone. You need to take care of yourself first. You need to do these activities that are going to stabilize your brain, that lead to recovery, so that when stress hits, instead of being knocked down, you're like this. That's about all I got to say. Please join us next week, 2 p.m. for Weight Loss Wednesday, where I answer your questions about healthy, sustainable, and permanent weight loss. I'm Chef AJ. Thanks for watching.